Welcome to the Point Stagger Podcast. My name is James Keeley. With me, as always, is Sammy Schaefer. How you doing, Sammy? Oh, it feels good. There's it's just electricity in the studio today. It is. Mm-hmm. We got a lot happening fast. This mm-hmm. is episode five on Thursday, September 12, 2024. All right. Sammy, we have breaking news. All right. Shortly ago, the great Shannon Sharp mm-hmm. uh, accidentally leaked a sex tape on Instagram. Um, fortunately, he's a fan of the show. He is calling in to state his case. That is amazing that you were able to get him on the phone. Let me get him on here. Hold okay, on. perfect. All right. Mr. Sharp. Yes. Uh, Mr. Sharp, it's James Keeley from the Point Second Podcast. Oh, how you doing, James? How's it going? Uh, doing fine, sir. Uh, it sounds like you're having a rough day. Yes, uh, I had my Instagram stories, and um, I was rolling around in my bed with my missus, and then it uh, hit, hit the button, and then... All my sexual escapades are just on Instagram Live, and everybody's hitting me up going, Hey, Shannon, your escapades are on Instagram Live. Hey, um, it's embarrassing. I'm sorry. You know, it happens. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. I just want to apologize to everyone from the whippersnappers to the senior citizens that could have heard that and been offended by my sexual noises. Don't worry. Listen, it takes a big man to apologize. I think everybody's fine. We all enjoy a little bit of uh, fun times. Mm -hmm. No worries. No worries. You know, you got a little primal there. A lot of good grunting going on. Were you trying to get in tune with your animal self? Uh, Who's that speaking? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is uh, Sammy. I'm I'm here with James. Oh, is that Sammy Schaefer? You got it. Sammy Schaefer, I'm a big fan of yours. Oh, thank you. That means so much to me. Shay Shay, I love you. Listen, we all have to kind of like hide our like sexualness, Mm -hmm. but you have it out there like weekendly. Like, you, you are exposing yourself consistently. I try, yes. Listen, I, I admire you. I mean, I enjoy being very uh, muscular and rich and handsome and uh, Hall of Famer, but um, you, you're also doing some good things. On a much smaller scale, yes, I try. Well, I appreciate you guys giving me the platform to come on here and state my case and say, very sorry for the sexualizations, but uh, I, I'm going to move on, and I hope you all do too. Well, you know, we appreciate you coming on this show just to, just to tell us how you feel about it. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, Sammy Schaefer. Thank you, Skip. Uh, it's James, but thank you very much, Mr. Sharp. We appreciate you coming on. Thank you, guys. That was that was cool as hell. That was amazing. Thank you, Shannon Sharp. Shay Shay, you're the best. That really, that was special. I can't mm-hmm. believe he's a fan. I, I, I'm i so impressed. You might, maybe he's been to one of my shows and I didn't know. Maybe. That would be amazing. I mean, look, you know, game, game recognizes game, Sam. <laughs> recognizes game. All right, uh, Sammy, what else is on the show? Well, we're looking for, everyone's waiting for an update on your health, James. What's been going on? Okay, I did I did get it checked out. Okay. Um, it's it's gotten better. I went in. They said it's not cancer. They actually gave me my chart. Oh, they actually handed it to you. Yeah, nice. which is rare. Very rare. Yeah. Um, there's HIPAA violations, but not if you sign off on it. I'm willing to do this for the show. The doctor said, he handed it to me. He says, it's still too fat. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at your health, unfortunately. I, I feel like inappropriate. That's pretty heavy-handed. You know, there was a lot of talk about Obamacare last night, and if this is any indication, mm-hmm. I don't want it anymore. <laughs> so, wow. This is um, apparently because I'm still too fat. Well, you got an answer at least. It's not like the it's not the worst answer, hey, but it's better than what it's we were. Better than malignant cancer. Yes, it's better than cancer. We have a lot more episodes to do in the Point Second Podcast, so it's good it's not cancer. I made it to episode five. Every day is a gift. There you go. I saw that as a shirt on a shirt. Every episode is a gift. Every episode? Aw. Uh-huh. That's a shirt. Hallmark card. If only we had someone making swag later. There we go. Merchandise <laughs> vendor. Matt, whatever. Anyway, Sammy, what else is on the show? All right. Guest pickers begin. We get our first Swifty troll. Mm-hmm. And Americans are unanimous. We have two excellent choices. Can't wait. Mm-hmm. Whoever wins. Sammy, episode four was a lot of fun. So much fun. Ask the PTP was a big hit. What did you think of that? I loved it. I, I absolutely had so much fun answering questions. Yeah, but send in your questions. We'll get you a parlay ticket. We'll Please. have a lot of fun with it. And we, we enjoyed answering uh, those questions. We're the guys you need to ask. Mm-hmm. About- and if you, if you don't want to put your questions in public, just DM us. DM yeah. the question to us. We'll get it up there. DM, text, mm-hmm. drunk text. The drunk texts are good, too. Drunk text. We'll keep you anonymous. Mm-hmm. If you have, like... A family dispute, too. That's what I want to get we'll into. Get, we'll definitely do, get in the middle of that. We'll be mediators for your family. Can't wait. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. Uh, do you have any updates on uh, Feet Finder? Any fetishes? Oh, what do you got? Yeah, I went on a deep dive. Oh, boy. And, and and Johnny, who asked the question, I think was very impressed on how serious we're taking his question. Okay. But we do not mess around when it comes to kinks, fetishes, whatever. Taboo? You don't. But, yeah. 
So the first question you asked was, how much can we make? Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, the, the looks like the number one foot fetish model, her name is Jessica Gould, makes 90 grand a year. Wow. Selling feet pictures. Oh, good for you, Jessica. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's it. She doesn't have to do anything else. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, there's a whole science behind it, though. But before, you know, like they, they break down the different types of feet and which types have better value to it. Okay. Like... Uh, a peasant foot, which is like your three toes or the long, the first three toes are the same. That's your number one foot. Wow. Then your Greek foot is number two. And that's where your second toe is longer than the big toe. And then the third and then the most the third most profitable is a Roman foot, which to me look very similar to peasant feet. I, I, I still don't know the difference between the three, but those are the three top producing feet wow types. yeah everybody's checking out their toes now yeah and like, what there's I a this? whole science to it the thing is it's a it sounds like you you mail off pictures and mm -hmm. they send you money mm -hmm. and what they do with those pictures is their property that is theirs they own it now you don't have to know mm -hmm. and i'm sure you don't want to know now if you don't want to get into the feet modeling there are other options there's okay. the three the three most profitable fetish photos now we talked we covered two of them first one is foot second one is the panties you gotta guess what the third one is. Is it? Is uh, I don't know. It's food. Food. People are paying big money to watch you eat food, and I mean lots of it, not just nibble on something, just gorging on food. There's a word for it. It's a uh, mukbang. Muk mukbang. M u k b a n g. Wow. Big big deal on on YouTube because it's not sexual so there's no you can put it on any they'll any find platform, a way to make it sexual but they're like i mean it is a fetish you know but yeah. that is like the third highest paying fetish uh out there right now this is fascinating it is you, yeah you told me you looked into this and i didn't want to know i wanted to hear <laughs> oh boy <laughs> so yeah we got we got deep into it wow and there you go jay chris we're figuring it all out for you thanks jay chris and man. and with the well what the fans want to know is if irish 13s has uh, is going to happen i'm sorry 14 oh 14s oh irish 14s. 14s everyone's waiting for you to drop that profile when you're irish you don't want to you don't want to scale us down a little bit we take what we can get uh yeah i'm in uh tell me how much money i will make and we will work on this so i do not care what you do with my pictures you can treat yourself have a real real party a real Sammy Tuesday over here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sammy Tuesday. Okay. We'll, we'll get back to that, folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tyree Kill Arrest video, a lot of different opinions on this. A lot of people text to me, especially because yeah. I have law enforcement as friends and family. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of different opinions. Uh, a few of my law enforcement friends said the cops were a little, little rough. You know, it's good, it's good to hear somebody that is a cop say that. Yeah. Especially because usually it's that blue line, like you don't cross it, but... I know. Did you talk to any of your cop buddies? I only have one, and my brother is so okay. irrelevant. He does not pay attention to any of this. As soon as he clocks out, he gets on his boat and goes fishing. He doesn't care. Let's look at him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, was was Tyreek being a punk? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, but he, you know, did he have his constitutional rights violated? Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it. I, go, I live by the rule. It's not illegal to be dumb. It's not illegal to be rude. Yeah. It's not illegal. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I kind of changed my opinion after I talked to some people because I was like, hey, he should have complied. He's being a punk. But they did drag him out of his car. Mm -hmm. Shoved him to the ground. And on he was already in cuffs and they're like wrestling him to the ground. And what if somebody sees something fall out of his pocket that thinks something mm -hmm. else? I mean, it could be, it could have been a, a, a tragedy. My guess is when the cops saw how big he was, they yeah. got a little bit like, oh shit, we better, we better be aggressive. He's not big. You don't think he's big? He's 5'6". I mean, he's well, muscular. I mean, muscular. Yeah, I don't yeah, mean yeah. tall. I mean, just yeah. muscular. If I saw that guy, he started talking trash to me. I'd be nervous. The guy that pulled he's, over. He's only really five what? He's like 5'6". Holy he's crap. I crazy know small. 5'7". I don't know. 5'9". I don't know. Yeah, uh, he's, he's still short for, as hell. Still small for, for a pro player. Yeah. For as, for as ridiculously talented as he's very short. Um, he might be 5'9". I don't know. Mm. But um, Calais Campbell, who pulled over, and yeah. they were like, you need to get out here, is enormous. Yeah. He, he is a large, mm. large human being. And and, was, I was saying, and then he was in, and, and then the cop was in his face too. Like, yeah. give me your ID. Like, what did he do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was blocking traffic, but there really wasn't, you know, it, it, it was it was aggressive policing. And I, I, as much as I support the police, I don't like aggressive policing. But I always say, like, deal with it later. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you, you can always get a badge number and, and and file a complaint, but you don't want to tick off maybe a, a bad apple. Mm -hmm. So be good and and, and and take care of yourself. Yeah. But. I gotta say, he did have an 80-yard touchdown after that happened. 
You know, maybe they maybe they were trying to like stat the uh, pad the numbers a little bit. Like they pulled him over just to piss him off. He had seven catches for 130 yards and a touchdown after that. <laughs> Could this be like Michael Jackson's father's belt, where we have to get him pulled over and dragged to the ground every game for him to really get that 2,000 yard season we want? <laughs> Will you do it, Tyreek? Come on, Reek. He would do it for the Dolphins. Yeah, do, do it for the Dub. Come on, aggressive Miami Dade policing. <laughs> Help us out. We need a Super Bowl. <laughs> Did you watch the debate? I did. I yeah. watched all, what is it, two and a half hours or whatever it ended up being. And it was only supposed to be 90 minutes, but I'm pretty sure it made two hours. Yeah, yeah it was. It was what you think? I hated it. <laughs> I, I reluctantly watched it because you said we were going to talk about it. I didn't know Shannon Sharp would go have a sex tape <laughs> come out. So we needed material. We did need material. Oh, I hate it. But I, I I don't, I mean, I don't even, I'm not even registered to vote. I could give two shits about politics. Look at this guy. Don't care. Look at this guy. And it was just so bad. They, I was like, Throwing like riddling at this at the screen, hoping to get them to get back on topic because they just kept going all over the place. It, it did look childish mm-hmm. a lot of times. It, 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 the moderators look like uh, uh, like marriage counselors for mm-hmm. like sadly like a typical marriage mm-hmm. that people are going to counseling for. Uh, you know, but they are obviously like we want the wife to win. Um, but it was it was yeah it was it was kind of depressing. Kamala seemed you know. A little nutty, but she she handled herself all right. She, you know, I, I'll just say this: like the bar was so low for her. Yeah, all she had to do was not have a meltdown. Yeah, or come across as an idiot, and did, she and she did. She didn't I mean, cackle. She did no, she didn't cackle. She didn't lose place of what she was talking about. Like she co- she was coached really well. Yeah, and she came across as a good public speaker, and that's all she needed to do. I think she skipped her breakfast chardonnay to make sure she was like on point. <laughs> like she was good. Yeah. She, <laughs> I'm not getting no. I think Trump must have had that Chardonnay. She does that like that dry. Oh, America. That's oh, America. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's got to do start doing a great impression. Yeah. It ain't good, this guy. Um, did she say she was a middle class kid? Because, oh, yeah, she said it 47 I'm times. I'm pretty sure she may have mentioned it once or twice. Yeah, MAGA cats are everywhere on social media. If one good thing came out of this, MAGA cats. Let's see some MAGA cats, Sam. So good. I love MAGA cats. So here's. Here's, there's there. Trump posted that himself. That one's from Trump. I love that he leaned into it. He leaned into it. Mm-hmm. He needs. There he is. There he is. Saving he's him. got a goose and a maga cat, and uh, he's being chased. Yeah. Well, I mean, where uh, is that? Ohio. I think it's Ohio. That's definitely Ohio. And then don't snack on me. Mm-hmm. Don't snack on me. <laughs> Come on, everybody. I think that's fair. Maga cats is so good. Maga cats is good. But the one thing that happened is that not one vote was changed not one mind was changed no. nobody looked at that and go you know what i was gonna vote trump yeah but that kamala looks great and nobody was gonna vote kamala and said you know what mm-hmm. that's my guy right there <laughs> he handled himself <laughs> well he did not seem petty he did not seem what i suspect he would have been they both seemed exactly who they are yeah you, you i mean i think she came across as a little bit of a better speaker but not enough for anyone to be like oh, yeah yeah that's the next president yeah that's why like back in the day people would have to like kind of shame themselves if they voted for Trump and, you know, especially in certain areas of the, the country. And now I'm like, I think for every election, you're like, your guy's not great. Mm-hmm. It's it's not Superman versus Lex Luthor. No, it's two Lex Luthors that are. All, it's, a, it's Denver versus Carolina. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Denver versus Carolina. It's it's just not great options. <laughs> and both sides are like, this one's going to hit the nuclear, you know, the nuclear weapon. <laughs> He's hitting the button. So. You know, whatever. I, I, I got I got somebody who I want to win. I think you got somebody who you want to win, but you, you don't care as much. But mm, I'm not, I'm not gonna, voting, so I don't I'm care. not turning my show into this platform. <laughs> good luck. But but MAGA cats, MAGA cats. I'm all in. So good. Can we talk about our first Swifty troll? Oh, I love it. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Don't snack on me. Uh, all the way at the end. All the way at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're gonna have to read this. Sure. So I posted. Uh, with Taylor Swift and Kelsey saying, and I believe in a thing called love, on X, at Point Second Pod on X, mm-hmm. what a totally natural looking natural looking couple. Mm-hmm. And then a Swifty fan said, "What well, you can read it, Sam. Ooh, someone is mad for not having a relationship, crying cat. Is that a crying cat? <laughs> yeah. I think it's supposed to be laughing. I don't know. Ooh, someone is mad for not having a relationship. You know, like, it's funny, but I'm kind of annoyed. I can't even read her screen name because it's just so confusing. 13 Etsy. Etsy. And some random letters, but know. you know what? Thank you for being a troll. Thank you for being a troll. Thank you for engaging. We will take it. Yeah. I'd say I wear it as a badge of honor. You know, I might follow her back. If no one's listening, I think she's probably 12. So uh, mind your piece in case. 
<laughs> but yeah, we got our first one. Good for you. I, we engaged. I said it, I, I responded to her and I said, if anybody needs me, I'll be in the burn ward. And she did not respond. <laughs> no, nope. she made her point, moved on with life. She's like, maybe even blocked you. She's for, like, screw this guy. Forget it. He's not in a relationship. <laughs> no one likes him. He's just a jerk face. All right. Let's enough with politics. Yeah. Enough with well, Shannon Sharp and his escapades. Let's talk some football. College football picks. Oh, Sammy, we got to get back on the right side. Yeah. Of the, uh, the 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 record here. Mm-hmm. All right, college football picks. What's our first game? All right, Alabama at Wisconsin Saturday at eleven. There you go. Wisconsin is plus fifteen and a half with the total at fifty and a half. Okay, uh, Bama beat Western Kentucky six or three nothing. We beat USF last week forty two sixteen in a very sloppy game. We scored forty eight. I'm sorry, twenty eight in the fourth quarter. Wisconsin has played Western Michigan and South Dakota so far. They haven't played anybody. What am I taking? Alabama team total over thirty three and a half. Gotta take it. You know you were taking Alabama. Even put it in the parlay for our, uh, the people that contributed to Ask the PTP. Nice. We'll get to that later. Mm-hmm. What's the next one, Sam? LSU at South Carolina, 11 a.m. South Carolina is plus seven with a total of 50 and a half. It's an SEC matchup. Both teams put up some numbers. Uh, they can get slow in some games. South Carolina plus seven. What are we taking? We're taking that over at 50 and a half. Shocking. Yeah, I know. Shocking. You're trying to play into the crowd. 50 and a yeah. half. All right, what's next? Notre Dame at Purdue. Purdue is plus 10 with a total at 45 and a half. Okay, Notre Dame lost last weekend. You, this was news to you in the last episode <laughs> yep. to the Northern Illinois University, whatever they are, 16 to 14. Mm-hmm. Purdue beat Indiana 35-31. Not a big, you know, nah, not, not a huge accomplishment. And they beat Indiana State, uh, even less accomplishment, 49-0. Uh, Notre Dame could respond. But I don't see it. Who are we taking, Sam? Purdue plus 10. Two plus ten. Take points. Like a gift. All right. Last one. We got a four piece in college football. All right. Ole Miss at Wake Forest. Wake Forest is plus 23 and a half. A lot of points there. And a total of 63 and a half. Yeah. I know. 23 and a half looks tasty. Yeah. Ole Miss beat Furman. Furman. 76 nothing. Middle Tennessee State. 52 to 3. Wake Forest beat uh, NC A&T. <laughs> I know these teams about as well as you do. 45 to 13. <laughs> And lost to Virginia last weekend, 31-30. I think there's only one answer here, Sam. Mm-hmm. What's that answer? Over 63 and a half. <laughs> overs, overs, overs. And one team total, over. Oh, no, no, we got Purdue plus 10. Yeah. All right, some diversity there. Mm-hmm. That always works. All right. <laughs> wow. All right, other, team, other games I'm looking at. Oregon, Oregon State. That used to be kind of a fun game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the over's 50. Oregon put up 37 last week against Boise State. Uh, game has gone over three in the last four games, except last year. So we'll, I don't know. We'll post these on X if uh, they look good. If I if I keep it going, which I'm sure I will. Yeah. Washington State at Washington. Washington's plus four and a half. I kind of like that. The in-state rivalry game. Uh, State's played uh, better opponents so far, so them getting four and a half. What else? What's next? Uh, Texas A and M. Uh, Texas A and M at Florida. Sorry, Florida's plus four and a half. We got a total of forty six and a half. Yeah. I I, I want to take this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I was a, a reformed Gator fan. Um, uh, Dave Haycock was trolling my Gator friends uh, on on, on uh, Instagram. Nice. So we'll see. Uh, I'm probably going to take the Gators in the swamp, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. What's the last one? Colorado at Colorado State. Colorado State is plus seven with a total at 58 and a half. Yeah. And do you, can you read the instructions on this one, this game? Flip a coin and then place your testicles in a drawer. Then slam the drawer. It'll be less painful than... Than, than spending hard-earned money on this game. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's sound advice. So you put it on there just because you want everyone to slam their nuts in a drawer. I want everyone to know that stop betting Colorado. All right. <laughs> Coach Prime has let us down. Yeah. Okay. He helped us in a couple of games and it's over. Okay. <laughs> Shadur Sanders, his son, mm-hmm. is probably going to sit out at some point and they're going to try to sell him to the NFL. Like, I, I, I don't see it going well. They're going to pull LeBron. I, yeah. I, I feel like they're going to say he'll cooperate here, even though he mm-hmm. quit on his team. Yeah. I don't like it. I, I don't I don't see that being a good thing. Stay away from Colorado. Not betting them anymore. I'll probably bet them. <laughs> Last week uh, we were two and one, but three and five for the season. Okay. Gotta get back on the right side. All right, enough of college football. On to the big boys. NFL picks. Damn, I love that song. Is that Hollow Notes? You know what? It really hits. I think it's Hollow Notes. Or I think it smacks is what these young kids these or slaps. One of those slaps. Things. I don't know. I'm trying to remember what these Ugh. kids. Are. <laughs> so glad I'm old and my chin looks like this. 
Uh, what, what what's our first game, Sam? All right, let's start off at Buffalo at Miami. This is the Thursday game. Buffalo is two and a half plus two and a half with a total of forty nine. All right, um, I'll likely take the fins on the money line. I had this crisis of conscience. Can I just take uh, the fins on the money line and buy the juice back, or does that go against overs, props, and underdogs? You're the pro here. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna think about it. Okay. All right. Personally, I'm gonna take the Dolphins on the money line. I think everybody knows that, mm-hmm. but that's that's obvious. Yeah. Um, what are we taking? We're taking Jalen Waddle over 64 and a half receiving yards. Yeah, that's the bet, people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the bet. I like Waddle a lot. We get a little Waddle gift going up here. This will be this will be where we're at. He, he he's going to come through. They, he got a, a three year, 84 and a half million dollar extension in May. The Dolphins expect him expect him to be the man uh, once Tyreek Hill retires or uh, is murdered by the police. Um, so we're, we're we're really dependent on you, Jalen. Mm-hmm. And good luck, Tyreek. <laughs> What's the next game? Uh, Tampa Bay at Detroit. This is Sunday at noon. Tampa Bay is plus seven with a total of 51 and a half. All right. Uh, the Bucks won 37-20 last week over Washington. Washington's defense is loaded, and I don't know why they give up so many points. Maybe their offense isn't staying on the field that much. Or maybe, you know, the Bucks offense is kind of clicking. I don't know. Baker Mayfield went 24 for 30, 289 yards, four touchdowns, and zero interceptions. He had a hell of a day. Uh, what are we taking? We're taking Tampa Bay team total over 20 and a half. I like that. Mm-hmm. I really like that. That's surprising. I stayed up late last night looking at these. I'm going to look like a fool if I do four. What's the next one? LA Chargers at Carolina. Again, new game. Carolina is plus six and a half with a total at 39 and a half. All right. Uh, Carolina lost 47 to 10 to New Orleans. I'm surprised you're taking any action on this game. I got an angle. Okay. I got an angle. Okay. I, I, I see Jim Harbaugh in there. I just, you know. We'll see. Chargers beat the Raiders 22 to 10 last week. What's the what are we taking? The Chargers team total over 21 and a half. They'll they'll score more than 21 and a half. They scored 22 last week versus the Raiders. Carolina looks terrible. <laughs> they seem to be tanking again. Mm-hmm. I don't know. All right, we got one more game. All right, Las Vegas at Baltimore, another noon game. Las Vegas is plus nine and a half with a total at 41 and a half. All right, Baltimore blew it to Kansas City in the opener, losing 27-20. We all know how that turned out. It was not good Mm -hmm. for the PTP. Las Vegas again lost 22 to 10 to the Chargers. Gardner Minshew is QB1 for the Raiders, and they basically only have Devontae Adams. Antonio Pierce is the head coach. He took over as interim coach. He's the guy. They surrounded him with some coaching veterans and former head coaches. Marvin Lewis. The former Baltimore head coach. He's the assistant head coach. Joe Philbin. Ugh. Former Dolphin Dude, head coach. I just like the, his name, Philbin. Ugh. <laughs> I'll never forgive him. I'll never forgive him. Do you think I'll forgive him? No. I won't. No, I'll put money on it. You won't. All right. Rob Ryan, Rex Ryan's brother, senior defensive assistant. And I was surprised to see this. I was like, because I knew Marvin Lewis was on the staff. And I I, I, I kind of blocked that out of my mind that Philbin was. But um, uh, Deuce Gruden. Hmm. Can we get a picture Deuce. of Deuce Gruden yeah, up yeah, here? Yeah, let's do that. Let me grab that for you real quick. So fast. Deuce Gruden, the son of John Gruden, is uh, the assistant strength and conditioning coach. There he is. There he is. Hey, that's a good looking. That's a good looking guy right there, Bill. Yeah. Hey, hey, why don't you show him Deuce's uh, weightlifting picture? Look at him. That's impressive. You know why we call him Deuce? Yeah. Why is that? He always looks like he's slamming a deuce right there. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's a little joke between you and me. Good stuff, pal. Good stuff. <laughs> Look at Deuce lifting those weights. I mean, he's going to power clean that weight. Uh, it's pretty impressive. So your dad gets fired for saying a bunch that. of racist things, pal. Don't close that. Oh, crap. Yeah, that's okay. Keep talking. I'll bring it up. All right. <laughs> your dad gets fired for some racist emails or emails that were, let's just say, in bad taste. Yeah. And then they're like, well, well your son can stay. <laughs> I guess it's nice. I guess it's nice. It's all about winning. Yeah. Mm. But anyways, at least I got to do a little, little Gruden impression. Yeah, so you hey, love that Gruden Hey, I'm impression. back. <laughs> all right. I'm not on the Corona commercials anymore, so I got to come back whenever I can, pal. It's got a little bit of Beetlejuice sound. Hey, good stuff. I'm going to go through the most, man. <laughs> hey, they're Beetlejuice, too. <laughs> hey, they're kind of uh, interchangeable. <laughs> they are. I got a little uh, Michael Keaton coming this season. All right. If I say Gruden three times, what happens? Hey, hey let's find out, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Other games I'm looking at. San Francisco and Minnesota. Sam Darnold didn't look too bad, and he's got Justin Jefferson over 45 and a half, maybe. Colts Packers, Colts team total over 20 and a half. Kind of like it. Saints at Cowboys over 45 and a half. Definitely going to take that, I'm sure. Chicago at Houston. I got to find a prop. Maybe Caleb Williams over 97 passing yards. Maybe they can make 97. 
<laughs> and Falcons and Eagles, I like that team total over 26 and a half, but we'll see on those. I'll post some stuff on X. Follow us at X at Points Ticket Pod. Please. Week one of NFL did not go too well, so you might want to fade us. We were two and four. Uh, time for Sammy's picks. Well, I definitely started off week one pretty rough, but I am not giving up on the Bears. You know, I think at this point, Caleb Williams is going to learn from that or the team is going to train wreck. But I, we're going to go back to the Bears, and I'm going to take the Bears plus six. All right. I like that you call him Caleb Williams. Caleb? Instead of Caleb Williams. I'm from Chicago. I say my A's a little harder. I like Caleb Williams. Caleb. Yeah. Uh, all right. And with the dog of the week, let's get up. Let's get up our mm-hmm. buddy here. Where, where is the dog? Help, help me run. There we go. Keep going. One more. There, there we go. go. There he is. Aww. It's Rocco. Rocco is awesome. I love it. Rocco's our dog of the week. <laughs> Sadly, Rocco, Sammy put in this dog of the week pick, so... Oh, you don't like this pick? I, I I like the pick, but I asked to collaborate, and you were like, no. So uh, oh, okay, <laughs> no worries. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, if we'll see how this week goes. I might need to collaborate next week. <laughs> what do you like? Uh, we're going to see uh, the Browns at Jaguars. I don't know why, but I'm feeling the Browns at plus three. I also like how you say Jaguars. Yeah, Jaguars. Jaguars. <laughs> All right, and last but not least. We got some parlay ticket winners for responding to ask the PTP, mm-hmm. ask the PTP questions. So we got this right here. Nice. Uh, we got over 20 and a half in the Tampa Bay uh, team total. What else we got, Sam? We got over 32 and a half at the Alabama team total as well. Last oh, one. Alabama, and, and over 64 and a half uh, total Ole Miss at Wake Forest. Oh, I think I got 32 and a half. Maybe it said 33 and a half in the earlier segment. Anyways, I'll amend it. I'll put it all on X. Yeah. But the Bama team total might be 32 and a half, not 33 and a half. Yeah. I'm in. Good. I like less points. Nice. Yeah. So uh, we got three winners. We got Kitty, Jackie, and Johnny. Thanks for responding. Thanks for asking questions. We had a lot of fun with the Ask a PTP question. So, all right. Now on to the next thing. Are these game day drinks? Sammy. Yeah. It's time for everybody's favorite drinking game. These game day drinks. Nice. We got the head of PTP merchandise, Jackie mm-hmm. Smith, with us. How you doing, Jack Jack? Great. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. You're going to yeah. do a little uh, guest picker later? I am. The big su- the surprise is that. It's Jackie. <laughs> it's Jackie. Uh, Sammy, what do we have? And Jackie, can you show the, the yes. can for us? We have the Bud Light Next. This is their Zero Carbs Super Crisp Light Beer. This is apparently the way you get drunk and not put on any calories or carbs or any of that. Okay, but it, it's in like a skinny can. Yeah. Now, so we have to put it in a skinny PTP. Nice. Cozy. There you go, Jack. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't know if this is their way of trying to get into the seltzer market. It, but it, it's, is it a seltzer or is no, it a, it's beer? a beer? But I think they're trying to mask it as a seltzer. <sighs> I like the PTP koozie that Jackie made mm-hmm. better. All right, let's do this. Let's try it. Um, I used to be a big Bud Light drinker, then they got all political, and then I put my foot down because as a man of a certain 40, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. So I, I served these cold, but I didn't serve them ice cold. I don't think they're very cold. They're not super cold. Mm-mm. Okay. Right. Okay. So politics aside, right? Politics aside, I'm okay. not. And, and really, Bud Light could use to sponsor a, a real popular podcast like this. So everybody knows the rules. Five, uh, six point f- uh, four or higher makes the game day drink. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sam, what do you think Jackie gave this? I think she gave it a 4.7. Wow. I think she gave it a 5.4. Jack? Oh, really? Yeah. I yeah. gave it a, um, a 2.0. Wow. 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 Yeah. Okay. I just did not like Jack, it Jack, what do you think Sammy gave this? I said 2.1. Okay. I gave him a 4.8. 3.7. Wow. In the middle. I agree. Not not a good not a good drink. All right. And last but not least, what did old Jimmy give us? Jackie, what do you think? 3-3. Three, three. I, I think he actually liked it because of his Bud Light roots, but not enough to be a game day <laughs> drink. I think he did 6-2. I did a 4-6. Wow. And it's dropping. Yeah. Right, that last, did you see that? Little, mm. I, I, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was nothing was, enjoyable about this. No, no. Now, now, do you think ice cold would make it any better? That's the only reason why I gave it a 4-6. Well, that's your own fault. Yeah, but <laughs> but I don't think it would save it. What do you think, Jack? It doesn't taste bad. I, I don't love Bud Light. It doesn't... It's it, not like a bad Bud Light. It just doesn't really taste like anything. It okay. tastes nothing like Bud Light. Yeah. Wait, well, no, you're right. That's why it, it, I've scored it so poorly, because there really is nothing to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even look. What's the, what's the alcohol content on this? Like... I don't know. Four percent. Four percent. It's a decent, you know. It's sort beer. of like for people that don't really want to drink, but they want to have something in their hand. But like yeah. people are starting to drink a lot of Ultra, and Ultra has a little flavor to mm-hmm. it. I, I, I can, I understand why people 
drink it. But what's the alcohol in that? It's like 4.2. It's maybe 4.5. I don't know. Yeah, all those little oh. light ones are about 4. four I thought they'd be like... The thing, the thing about this beer is you would, if it was ice cold, I could see you just going through a six pack in, in a quarter. Right. And then you're just peeing the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't see any way I would drink this whole game. Mm. Yeah. No. <laughs> Drop it fast. It's under three now. <laughs> Drop it under fast. Under three. All right. That is the officially lowest rated drink you've ever had. Listen, we tried salads with Jackie. <laughs> We did. We did. You and I did athletic the, and, and, and the non-alcoholics. We're easing into this. By the end of it, there might be a Dorito-flavored uh, liquor that you might have from last Ooh, season coming. Let's get wasted. We're about to get hardcore. <laughs> We're going to fill this chin back up. <laughs> fill it back up. Jackie, uh, my health report came back. You'll see early in the episode. Okay, good. All right. Uh, this has been another unsuccessful episode of Is This Game Dave Drinks? Damn it. Are these game day drinks? <laughs> That's how bad it was. Be our guest, be our guest, make some picks and win some bets. All right, a new jingle for the guest picker and our first guest picker of the season. Again, welcome back, Jackie Smith. How are you? Great, thank okay, you. Okay, now you're not a, a giant football fan? Hmm. Are you, you're medium sa- to less than medium. You're more of a Sammy Schaefer than a James <laughs> Keeley when it comes to football watching. Accurate. All right. Welcome. <laughs> we're we're going to find out how you do regardless. Okay, yes. are you ready? I'm ready. The first game is in college. This is your college football. Six picks, Jackie. Okay. Alabama, Wisconsin. Who you got? Alabama. Oh, easy, right? It's Alabama. You got to take it. All right. Yeah. Or you get kicked out immediately. Yeah. Okay, there are rumors that you might have gone to the University of Illinois. This is true. It is true. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, so this should be easy. Central Mi- Michigan at Illinois. I did Illinois. Okay. I will second that. Okay. I, I also... Third, I didn't even have to say the Bama pick. I was, I definitely took we that. We all knew that, yeah. All right, LSU at South Carolina. Jackie, what do you got? LSU. Okay. I'm going LSU as well. All right, no surprises here so far. Texas A&M at Florida. Jackie. Texas. Wow. I will go the Florida. The Florida QB has a concussion. What? You need some research. Look at that. <laughs> Wait, should I change my pick? I was going to say Florida. Give me that. What was that again? No, no, no. You're good. No, no. <laughs> Damn it. Wait, I took Florida. I took Florida too. You're running this together. <laughs> What she makes up for lack of interest, she. <laughs> for rumors, she's good. She, she, she's, she's good. She's great with rumors. <laughs> and hearsay. I feel, that's a dig. Feel the judgy. <laughs> UCF at TCU. You have some connections to TCU. I do. Yeah. I think this is going to be a very close game. Mm-hmm. And I pick TCU. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with TCU as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're both wrong. <laughs> TCU is trash. And so are most of its supporters. <laughs> UCF, Central Florida, baby. All right, last one. Georgia, Kentucky. Georgia. Yeah, Sam? Georgia. Yeah, that's easy. Mm-hmm. All right, Georgia's definitely going to kill Kentucky. That's not going to happen. All right, so on these, I try to give uh, three double-digit favorites and then three little tighter games in college football. Uh, we also try to keep it a little similar in um, NFL picks. All right, Bills, Dolphins. Choose wisely. I am a little afraid, but I'm going to pick the Bills. Okay. Well, <laughs> I You're love it. I love it. I am definitely not going to pick the Bills. I'm going to go with the Dolphins, but okay. I do like that choice. Mm-hmm. Do you know? I, I did a little bit of research. Okay. Did you know? Okay. Uh, Colts at Packers. Wait, should we assume you're taking... We should assume. <laughs> Since I said it in this segment where I said I'm betting money on them. <laughs> Colts of Packers. Jackie, who you got in this one? Uh, Colts. Colts, okay. Yeah. You're a Bears fan, ipso facto. No, I just, I'm going Colts as well. I took Colts as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Buccaneers at Lions. Buccaneers. Okay. Okay, nice. I'm going with the Lions. Yeah, Lions it is for me too. Bengals that haunts us. It, yeah. Because I knocked you out of your survivor pool in week one with the Bengals. I'm not picking them again. They don't have Taylor Swift either. They don't have Taylor Swift either. <laughs> oh, exactly, exactly. There we go. That's, that's where it comes from. What about you, Sam? I will all stick the Chiefs. I mean, you got to take the Chiefs on that one. Bears, the hometown Bears at Texans. Uh, yeah, my sources were saying Texans, but I'm going to go Bears. Really? Mm-hmm. Your sources. What do you think, Sam? <laughs> I, well, I got to double down on the Bears. You got to. Uh, you're both wrong, Texans. <laughs> and the Monday Nighter, Falcons at Eagles. 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 I agree. Sweeping the board. Well, this was fascinating. A lot of insight. <laughs> one rumor. A little research. 
Week one, let's see. Let's see if you can get that crown. You got to take it from King Randy, who's going to be back, I believe, in week three. Ooh, the king's back. The king is back. He's got to defend his crown. Okay, but maybe we'll have a lady crown this time. Is that what they're called, or they just called crowns? I think they're just called tiaras. crowns. T- tiaras. Tiaras. They're real nice. They're crowns, too. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks for uh, coming out for guest picker, g- uh, game day drinks, Jackie. Will you stick around for the news? I will. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sammy. Yeah. What else is in the news? Saturday Night Live has hi- has hired three new cast members after firing three cast members in August. Yeah, they kind of cleaned house with a few people that uh, they they were very proud for hiring. They pat them, patted themselves on the back. They said, uh, we got rid of a bigot and we hired some people that were more diverse and, and we, we want to be inclusive. And now they can't. Have... It was a short-lived moment. Yeah. But, but they were able to high-five themselves. I think they look ridiculous now. Yeah. Like, they hired these people. They, they fired Punky Johnson, who was their first gay black really? female character. Yeah. And then Molly Kearney, who was their first non-binary cast member. And they were very, like, trotting them around, like, they're going to be stars. And then it just didn't work out. She toured with Colin Jost. I saw her. Molly Kearney? Yeah. Was she, give me, score her act. I thought she was okay. It was basically her, like, her story. Okay, because I feel like her act is terrible. That's the thing, like with Punky Johnson. I think Punky Johnson is really funny, but she's not good on Saturday Night Live. Like, just not her thing. Yeah, they, they didn't have a lot of places for her. They actually were, they wanted her to to try to be a Kamala Harris character, and I guess she she just couldn't get it, or she doesn't do impressions or whatnot. So they hired Maya Rudolph to do uh, Kamala Harris. And Maya Rudolph is fantastic. She's, she's really, really funny and talented. She's and, so good. Yeah, I guess they like kind of took her off another show on Apple that she was going to do because they're like, come back. You have to do this. This oh. is like your moment to shine. And, you know, if Kamala becomes president, it's going to be like a big role for you. Um, so they're banking on that. And they're very leftist over there. <laughs> when, 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 Hillary, when Hillary lost, they, they trotted out What's-Her-Face, who played Hillary. Um oh, um, What's her name? And then Kate she, McKinnon, right? Kate McKinnon, and then oh. she just plays Hallelujah at the piano, very dramatically dressed as Hillary. No punchline. No punchline. Very like our country's broken. That's a comedy show. And I, and I love her. She's so funny, and I kept waiting for the joke. She's talented. She's yeah. definitely talented. But th- they, they made this whole thing about it. So Shane Gillis, if anybody doesn't remember, he got hired, and he got fired like three days later because somebody dug up a podcast from 2018 where he made a joke. And it, it was offensive towards Asians, and 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 he said he regretted it. He said it, he 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 throws out a lot of stuff. It didn't hit, but he said he's he's in comedy. He shouldn't have to uh, apologize for everything. He took a swing and he missed. But he's not a bigot. He shouldn't be fired. He shouldn't have his livelihood taken from him. And and now they're firing these people. They didn't put him in a position to succeed. Shame on you, Lauren Michaels. If you call me, I will take the job, but I will not like it. I will not like it. I'm you will very reluctantly do it. Sammy, you know I could do it. <laughs> we can, we can both could. be on set. We'll be a little tag team. <laughs> there we go. We'll be a tag team. But yeah, I, I I, I, was kind of, I didn't want to see anybody get fired. Molly Kearney, she would appear on Weekend Update and go on about kids' trans rights things and all this stuff. And she would go on a, a, a rant. And at the end, people would clap, but they wouldn't laugh. And that's not the point of Saturday Night Live. It's okay. not to be on there to, to get your point across. Because there's Norm, Norm McDonald would be upset. He saw that. Norm is rolling over <laughs> in hell. <laughs> One of my favorites. I love the great Norm McDonald. If there's a if Norm McDonald isn't in heaven, there's no heaven. It probably isn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I I, I don't want to uh, say anything bad about people that got fired, but I I, I certainly want to say something bad about Saturday Night Live. They hired these people to get on their to to, to just virtue signal across the world, and they did not put them in a position to succeed, and now they fired them. They gave him a seven-year contract. Seven years. Everybody gets a seven-year contract. They started oh. out like void at any moment. And they said, Ruginair, we're done with you. We can't figure it out. Say bye. <laughs> that's Laura. That's pretty good, Laura Michaels. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, everybody. Time to go. That moment has failed. And now we're going to bring Shane Gillis back to host the show. <laughs> what a jackass. <laughs> so bad. All right. What else, Sam? Nirvana drummer and Foo Fighters frontman Dave Grohl Posted on social media that he is the proud father of a new baby girl. Congratulations, Dave yeah. Grohl. That's amazing news. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, <laughs> the baby is out of wedlock. He had to admit it. His uh, other daughters had to take down all of their social media because there was a lot of backlash. 
Uh, apparently, he got a divorce lawyer before this. Uh, let, let's look at his statement here. Where is it, Sam? I, I you go to the folder to the left. Folder to the left. Left, 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 left. Keep going left. Keep going. Keep going. And one, two more. No, go left. There we go. That one. This one. Yes. Oh, great. Okay, so this is a statement. Where is it? Girl. Okay. Uh, I've recently become the father of a new baby daughter. Congratulations. Born outside my marriage. Oops. Mm. I plan to be a loving and supportive parent to her. I love my wife and my children, and I'm doing everything I can to regain their trust and earn their forgiveness. We're grateful for your consideration toward all the children involved as we move forward together, Dave. Okay. I thought it was a nice statement. Mm -hmm. I thought he said, you know, there's a child involved. Uh, We decided to have the child. Trump says if they would have had that child in a lot of states, they would have torn it out of the mother and executed it. (laughs) Doesn't matter. Two-year-olds, they're taking two-year-olds, everybody. They're putting them in guillotines. Um, we got two famous people on the podcast this week. Yeah. My, my Republican friend's going to be like, you're screwing it up for Trump. Stop it. Everything he says is right. Um, if Game of Thrones taught us anything, mm-hmm. it's that bastards don't have it easy. So I'm glad that the that, that Grohl got out here and he was like, okay, uh, I screwed up, but there is a, a new life here and and... We're going to do the right thing. And I'm sorry that I, you know, people are hurt. And uh, I'm doing the right thing. Dan Marino, uh, famous quarterback of the Miami Dolphins, had a similar revelation in 2013 when it was revealed that he had an affair that resulted in the birth of a daughter in 2005. And he said, this is a personal and private matter. I take full responsibility both personally and financially for my actions now as I did then. Uh, We mutually agreed to keep our arrangement private to protect all parties involved. Now, I guess he gave this woman a lot of money and she moved to Texas. She was a, a, a production assistant when he worked, um, I think, for CBS, or he was a, an analyst for one of the football shows. And they had a, a fling, yada, yada, yada. They had a baby. And he, he, he go sorry, ahead. But I do love how he says, we mutually agreed to keep it private, but that was all money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, for sure. Now, they, they haven't disclosed what they got, but I guess the article, I read an article in the New York Post that said that they presume he gave her millions of dollars. And it was like, bye bye, go to Texas. Well, then she kept. She was like, I have a lot of money. So she became, she came back to New York and became like a socialite and was like oh. very known all around and yada, yada, yada. So How'd you fall into that, buddy? So Dan didn't keep his job and he moved back to Miami <laughs> with his six children and wife. So that didn't go well. But being honest about it is the only play. And people are typically more forgiving, especially when there's a child involved. So hopefully Dave and, and, and his family like get over this. I, I know he's embarrassed. Uh, you know, I like Foo Fighters. I, I once described the Foo Fighters as a girl I was dating, they were like, oh, or I went out a couple dates. They're like, what, you know, what do you think? I'm like, she's kind of like the Foo Fighters. I, I like her, but I'm not like that into it. <laughs> so, but that brings me to a Fast Five. Ooh. We haven't done a Fast Five yet. First one of the season. All right. Now, Jackie's not going to know a lot of these bands, but I'm going to let her take a shot anyways. <laughs> Great. Jackie, Soundgarden or Pearl Jam? Uh, Pearl Jam. Of course. What do you think, Sammy? Pearl Jam. Okay. Alice in Chains or Stone Temple Pilots? Jackie. Sammy. Alice in Chains. Alice in Chains. <laughs> Can yes. you name one Alice in Chains song? Right now? No, yeah, we're good. I didn't like the grouping on this one, but Bush or Hole? <laughs> Jackie? Bush. Bush. It's, it's Bush. I'm not it's a big Bush. fan of either of those, but Bush is the way Bush, I actually like them like 65, 35. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't, I, I've, I have two Hole albums. I have probably three Bush albums. So they were fun at the time. I actually thought there was some merit to them. Tool or Rage Against the Machine? Oh, Tool, obviously. Obviously. Exactly. I don't know, that's, that depends what kind of mood I'm in. Sometimes I want to Rage Against the Machine, but sometimes I just want to get real high and listen to Tool. It's a tough one. <laughs> it depends on what drugs you It like depends on, yeah, for sure. Uh, tool is the answer. And last one, Foo Fighters or Smashing Pumpkins? Jackie. I really don't like the Smashing Pumpkins. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yes. Incorrect. Incorrect. Oh, no. It's smashing totally Pumpkins. Totally not the Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing Pumpkins. They're Chicago also. I don't How care. dare both of you? Who cares? How dare both from? of you? Okay. Well, this has been a fantastic episode <laughs> of the Point Stuggin Podcast. Thank you, Jackie Smith, for joining us. Uh, Very well. Thank you, Shannon Sharp, for joining us. That was a really nice call in. I'm glad you cleared your name. I'm yep. glad you fessed up to it yeah. because, tonight, like I said in this, it all comes back to it. 
being honest about it, people are more forgiving. They're going to forget. So thanks, Shannon Sharp. We love you and we respect you. Uh, we'll see you uh, uh, soon. You got a parlay ticket coming for uh, asking a question on there. And uh, let's watch those games. Follow us on X at Point Second Pod. Follow us on Instagram at Point Second Pod. We're going to put out a lot of stuff. We're going to flood everything and try to make a success out of this thing. Everything. So get ready <laughs> or unfollow. See you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>